All right, lesson 12. We are gonna talk about cookie hijacking protection. When you see what can be accomplished by hijacking somebody's cookie, you might be a bit stunned at what is possible. And so the threat here is really dangerous. The protection is quite easy. That's the nice thing. We're going to start just by talking about what this is. What is session cookie hijacking? We have our innocent user, Bob Smith, logging in to our website, going through our, web, our login page, and as always, we have that session cookie. It's always on our computer. And again, that session cookie is great because that's what lets us go from page to page to page so that I can look at my balances and I can look at my orders and all this without having to reauthenticate over and over again. Yeah, I can just see everything. I can go to all my pages, makes it, that's what makes using a site like Amazon or my online banking so much easier. So it's great that we have that. But what if that session cookie that is essentially saying we're logged on as Bob Smith, what if that session cookie were to get into the wrong hands of this malicious user? And they go to access a page and the page says, oh, you're authenticated as Bob Smith. Here's Bob Smith's profile page and all of his personal information and so forth. That's all it takes for somebody to be able to get onto someone's system and steal that session cookie, maybe en route. They can get it en route if they're able to uh, view it in a network trace, who knows? So that's the threat, that is the concern here. Now here's what's really even more interesting. Bob Smith now logs out or he closes his browser. His session's done but this session's still alive. So even though Bob's logged off, this, this malicious user is still using his valid session for as long as he wants. So it goes from bad to even worse of a, of a threat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use ASM, of course, to apply cookie hijacking protection. And here's how this works. Same, same starting point, we log in. Go to the login page, all that is good and fine and dandy. Now this is where, at this point, ASM is going to get some information about that user's device and it's going to create that device ID that we talked about earlier. I told you that, that the, when we have that feature enabled, it will basically create that every time somebody connects dynamically based on that device. So now we have this device ID. So now when the session token, the session cookie, excuse me, is sent, it also includes that device ID information. Now they want to go see their history page. Well, we're going to look and see, does that device ID match the device ID and the cookie name. Oh, it does. Great. Come on in. You can hit the history page, no problem. You're good. Now this malicious user is now going to steal that cookie as is. They're going to try to connect. ASM is now going to check that device and see what device ID do we come up with for that? And does that device ID match the device ID and the cookie. Ah, it does not, so guess what happens? We're not coming in. And that's how ASM cookie hijacking protection works. How we set it up? Again, fairly easy. Just a couple of configuration pages that we need. Not too tough. Same place we were at in the last lesson. We were here earlier, remember? Uh, we came in and we enabled device ID. I told you there's a couple of reasons why you use this. In the last lesson, we used it to uh, do blocking from the same device ID uh, violations. We also use it for cookie hijacking protection. 
So we're going to first enable that. Then, second thing we're going to do is we're going to come to our Learning and Blocking Settings page. And then we're going to come down to the Cookies section. And we have a violation called Modified Domain Cookies. This violation is enabled if you use the fundamental or the comprehensive policy templates. And in addition to that, by the way, this is enabled if you use the comprehensive template. So if you use the comprehensive template, this is already enabled, and so is this. So the moral of what I'm trying to get at here is if you use the comprehensive template, ASM uh, cookie hijacking protection is already enabled. Already enabled. Because this is all that needs to be done. Remember, we can always look, get a little information about what these violations are, if you're ever confused, what the attack type is, and so forth. We also have a, another feature, which is called ASM Cookie Hijacking Protection. Here's the, a, here's the trick. A savvy hacker can actually hijack, they even know how to hijack both the session cookie and the ASM cookie that was protecting the session cookie to begin with. And if they know how to uh, steal them both and use them both, they actually can still get through. And you'll do this in your exercise. You'll see this work in your exercise. This is an additional protection to prevent that, to prevent them from being able to get around that. Um, so it just basically, we'll say it adds one additional extra piece of protection. And how about that? So that's it. That's it. So uh, you're going to see in this exercise, it's a little tricky to copy a cookie. Uh, you're going to do it in PuTTY. So you're going to go log in as a valid user on the Hackathon website. And once you've logged in, you should be able to view your session cookie. And then you're going to copy that session cookie and paste it into a different web browser and try to use it in a different web browser. And you will see that you will succeed at stealing that session from one browser to another. And then you'll add the cookie protection Cookie hijacking protection, you'll try it again, and then it will fail. Then you'll try to add them, try to, uh, so what's going to happen is once you've added the cookie hijacking protection, you're now going to see another new cookie. When you uh, log in as your user in Hackazon and you go look at the log in the PuTTY, you're going to see there's actually two cookies. There's a new cookie that ASM creates to protect the session cookie. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually steal them both. And that's actually going to succeed until you add ASM cookie hijacking protection as the second line of defense. So that's again really what that is. It's a second line of defense with cookie, from cookie, uh, cookie hijacking protection.